On today's episode, the EV market is in trouble and it's going to get worse before it gets better. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. If you follow the electric vehicle market anywhere in the world today, it's pretty much bad news. Now that's especially true in America where slowing production and layoffs at majors like Tesla, Ford and GM are the inevitable result of dramatically softening sales. At Tesla, Elon Musk fired essentially the entire supercharger development team, then began hiring them back again. The EV market is complex in America because of the fundamental difference between electric and gasoline-powered cars, and that's fuel. There's a strict church and state separation between the oil business and the automotive business. Automakers don't become oil companies or vice versa, and the reasons for this are historic and interesting. At the turn of the last century, oil companies made their money by selling a specific type of refined oil product, kerosene. Kerosene was the primary illuminating fuel used in pre-electric America, and in the process of refining it, a dangerous and useless byproduct was created, gasoline. In the early days of Pennsylvania crude, gasoline was dumped into rivers because it was too volatile and dangerous to use in household lamps or stoves. Now, as the internal combustion engine really took off in the first decade of the last century, the fuel was technically well understood and available, and it was relatively cheap. Now, distribution was a different matter, and early drivers sometimes had to resort to ordering gasoline in cans from drugstores, but the filling infrastructure soon caught up. Now, that's happening today in electric vehicles, as charging standards appear to be converging around the Tesla supercharger system, and charging infrastructure is being built coast to coast. But there's a dirty secret to the automobile industry in America, and that is that manufacturers suggested retail price is key, but not in the way you think. It's a bit like housing. People don't buy price, they buy monthlies. And with two decades of insanely low interest rates combined with ever longer borrowing terms, people who really couldn't afford a $70,000 automobile were buying them. Well, not anymore. Current interest rates are not high, they're at generational norms, but they do mean that monthly payments could be $1,100 or $1,200 for years. Now, sanity is returning to the automotive market and demand is for lower priced vehicles. Unfortunately, with current technology, electric vehicles simply aren't cheap enough especially given the weak driving range built into current EV technology. Unless you live in a city and have access to a charger, most people buying electric vehicles have an internal combustion engine vehicle or two in the family fleet. That's fine, but as a second or third vehicle in the family, EVs are still too expensive. Now, the predicted solution to this problem is a robust used EV market, but this is, of course, dependent on an adequate supply of new vehicles coming off lease or trading in against the latest models. So it's a catch-22. If not enough new vehicles are sold, there won't be enough used EVs to support widespread adoption. And the Biden administration has complicated the issue by imposing tariffs on imported Chinese EVs, which are notably cheaper than European or American brands. Now, there might be a workaround as BYD is talking about building an EV factory in Mexico, and the supply chain to build large quantities of EV components is going up all over America as we speak, so it is coming. But with current technology, the critical metric may not be miles of range or even MSRP, it's going to be the FICO score and the ability of an increasingly indebted consumer to commit to five, six, or seven years of high monthlies to drive a new vehicle. So what's needed? A technology breakthrough in both the manufacturing processes to make them, along with the relaxation and expensive government regulation. So is this gonna happen? Well, yes, but not in this decade. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and the Engineering Roundtable not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.